get started, okay? Lord, thank you for the women here and just their friendship and camaraderie. And Lord, we ask you just to show us something new in your word today. In your name, amen. amen. I love this chapter. Did you enjoy this chapter? Yes. It was a good one, wasn't it? Um, and I, I loved the call to unity yeah. that it gave. The call to, to the stature, I think is what he said, the stature, the maturity, the full maturity, and uh, be like Christ. And um, it reminded me when, when we talked about every wind of doctrine that people follow, it reminded me of, of the times that Tom and I were in Uganda. When we first went there, there was, and I've told you some of this before, but there was a major, major revival that was going on in Uganda. And we happened upon the, the actual path, the, the literal uh, road of that revival in starting where it started in uh, northern Rwanda and going through Uganda in the 19... And, um, but what happened with that, there was a, a, an excitement and it, just a, a major revival where people were getting saved. I mean, when Idi Amin was in power in the 70s, um, the, the country was 98% Muslim, but it is, it is way over 50% Christian now. Wow. Thank you. And uh, that is, I mean, it's an, a wonderful, wonderful story of how that took place. It took place through a lot of persecution. Yeah. But um, what we did notice when we went in is that they didn't really know the word of God. It was a it was a problem. They did many people in the villages. They weren't able to go to school. They weren't able to read. They couldn't afford a Bible. They really did not know the word of God. So what we had was somebody who uh, preached a message. And then over here, then what this guy heard it, and he said, well, I'm going to preach that message, and he preached it. And then somebody in his group heard it, and they went over here and preached that message. And that's how uh, they, that's how the pastors work together in these villages. Now, you know, have you ever played, have you, have you ever played telephone? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that these, that these messages get skewed even more and even more as they go on, and pretty soon, in some of them, them, to begin with, they came from Christian television, and you and I both know that that could be good or bad, <laughs> depending on where you listen. And the people were, were feeling these winds of doctrine, because with each step, each part of that telephone, they were mixing a little bit of what they knew. Yeah, maybe a little bit of where they came from, which was a, a background of Islam, or a background of witch doctors, or a background of Catholicism, or a background of this. And uh, some of them, you know, you don't, I mean, and I'm not saying anything against Catholicism, please hear me. I'm just including that some of them were what they, Baptist background, or, or anything like that. And what you had going through the, the towns, the villages, were winds of doctrine mm -hmm. that they got confused. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I sat down and talked to a pastor's wife one time, and she said, Sandy, my husband, who is the, who's the pastor, doesn't want me anymore. And he has found... He, there's an, a young girl in the church that has been flirting with him and wants him, and he's been very endearing to her and, and her to him. And I woke up the other night, and he was interceding over me as I was asleep. And he was praying for my death oh, so that he could marry this other woman. Now, did you hear that? The, the mixture of... of religious or, or spiritual jargon mm -hmm. mixed in with, with an understanding of this is what I want, the Lord's going to give it to me. And and it, I just went, whoa, 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 wow. 
and Tom and I began our ministry together um, with a, a mandate to protect the purity of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to teach these pastors the word of God right. and put in their hands uh, uh, something that they can make them <coughs> not read because we can't teach them to read and we don't have that time, but to have an auditory uh, audio, audio Bible that's in their language that's so empowered. So that, and we saw many of pastors walking down the street like this. <laughs> walking down the street, just listening to the Word of God, and it just that made our hearts just go, just, yes. But um, that, those are the winds of doctrine. Now I know that you can name winds of doctrine here. My goodness, we all can name. That, that they're just not really based in the Word of God, but they, but they end up in the church anyways. I'll, can, I'll give you another example. The prosperity or God wants us wealthy. Well, where is that in the Bible? God wants us wealthy. you got to look to the examples of, of Jesus. He said, I, I don't even have a place to lay my head. That's not the important thing here. Um, but we've seen it. I remember in 1988 hearing a very uh, renowned pastor preach uh, about a book he wrote called 88 Reasons Christ is Coming Back in 1988. Well, guess what? <laughs> he didn't come. <laughs> but those are winds of doctrine that the, the church, I mean, the ones that are not founded and rooted in the Word of God will suck that up and call it their own. And people are lost and confused because of this. Let me go on. Um, so the Lord has given to the body gifts. Now, recognize that, I, and I want to read this to you. Have you got... Uh, Ephesians 4, 11, up there for me. And I want to read it to you. That it says in verse 11, He gave, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. He didn't give them to, to each individual people. He gave the apostles to the church. He gave the prophets to the church. For their end, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ, and to bring together in unity the body of Christ. So we got to be real careful when we say, God has given me a gift, because he hasn't. He has given the body of Christ a gift, and he's going to use you to do it, if you're home. Come on, can I get an amen on that? Amen. If you're humble. If you can't let your ego get in the way. If you're humble and, and, and usable to him. Now, we talked about, and, and I've, I've, I've mentioned this before, but everybody put your hand up like this. I'm going to just show you something I learned. You've got the apostle, mm -hmm. the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Your prophet is the one that gets that fringe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. This is, and I've only seen a few modern day prophets that are just so authentic that you just want to go, whoa. Yes. You know, I, can, I, can, I know you can name a few. My husband Tom was one of those people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would shudder when that finger would come out. <laughs> no, okay. And just shudder because he was so dead on straight with what he was saying that it offended some people. Mm -hmm. And he didn't sugarcoat anything. But, no. but I believe that there are people like that, that the Lord sets as a benchmark into a culture where the waves of doctrine are all over the map, and they are that benchmark that says, this is the word of God. This is what the Lord says. This 
is where we stand. And I, I many a times, Tom stood up and, and said those things, and I went inside and went, oh no, it's happening again. But now that he's gone, I really appreciate his, his purpose in the body of Christ, okay. his ministry in the body of Christ. He was kind of like Ezekiel. He wasn't really a popular prophet, but you know those two words are kind of popular. <laughs> That's right. So the first finger is a prophet. The second finger is the evangelist, and because that because it stands out among everybody else, it's, it goes out first. It goes out first. And the evangelist is out there just preaching the word, bringing in the flock. There's a, there's a few people in here that are evangelists. I think, um, um, I think Candy is, is kind of a, an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Are, yeah, you talk to a lot of people. No, no, I think you're a little bit of, a, there's a little bit of evangelist in you. Mm -hmm. And um, that they're out there first and they are. Someone asked me the other day, what is the difference between an evangelist and a pastor? Oh, it's a big deal. <laughs> What'd you say? It's a big difference. It, there is a difference, mm -hmm. but it was an excellent question. Yeah. The evangelist, we we, um, we we used to say, he comes in, he blows up, he he blows in, he blows up, he blows out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the shepherd, of course, which is the fourth finger, and we, that's because it's the ring finger, the, um, the relationship finger, is the pastors of the church that, that will come in and they, they have a flock, that they care for that flock. And um, I think you have a pastor's heart. I really do. There's a few of you in here that I believe have a pastor's heart. I was just thinking about our present pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, Donna and, um, and Bud. Oh, my goodness. I've had a lot of pastors because my husband was quite a prophet. <laughs> I've had quite a lot of pastors. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, and Pastor Bud and Donna have been, they, they have paid the most attention to the flock I've ever seen. They were true pastors when it comes to caring for their flock. Um, and I loved that about them. Um, and then the last one, the little finger is the teacher. The, the teacher thinks he should be the biggest finger, but he's not. <laughs> he's just the little, he's the smallest finger, but he, um, he gets it done with the Word of God. He loves to teach. She loves to teach. She loves to, to study and, and get all of the stuff out of the Word of God, those nuggets mm -hmm. of truth that, that she just takes your breath away. <gasps> I see it. I see it. And then share that with the, with the, with the group. And then the apostle, the thumb, that is... That is the, the ministry of getting things established, set in order, and oversee. Paul was an apostle. And you, you say that because that it's the gripping. It grips and holds everything in that hand. And there's many, many um, missionaries that are apostles, that they are church planters. They and, and Sandra and Mark have have done a lot of this and they, that that office of the apostle is, um, of helping get churches planted and started. And they're not tied to one. They're tied they're all of the body of Christ is their mission. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then um, if you go on to Romans 12, 6 through 8, and again, it's prefaced in verse 3 of Romans 12. Uh, For by grace given to me, I say to every one among you, do not think yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. It's that humility thing again. And the Lord keeps bringing that back in because when he, when he uses you, it's a heavy thing. And sometimes 
you want to know, did you see that? Did you see what happened there? <laughs> I prayed for that person, and they're healed. You know, and the, that pride starts to seep in a little bit. And but the Lord says, like he, he keeps saying, humble in His grace. God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others. And by the way, I need to say this. All of these gifts are equal. None of them are better than the other. Um, except at the end of Corinthians it says to prophesy, and then it goes right back into, in chapter 13, Love. Love. The love chapter. So serving, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. God has given you leadership ability. Take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And this is where we start getting into the gifts that the Lord has given the body, and he uses you to do it. Let's go back over to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To, if one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice, wisdom. <clears throat> to another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. And what that is, is um, speaking to somebody into someone's life that you happen, that the Lord just kind of downloads it and give it, give, you're telling them something they know, but you didn't know, um, of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to faith. another. Go ahead and read it, Sandra. The same spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else. The one spirit gives the gift of healing. Amen. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Mm -hmm. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown, unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being but it is, it is one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Now, I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell you that some, the longer that you are in Christ, the longer that you are, are, are conforming to his image and being in, being in a maturity, the Lord is going to use you in different gifts. It's almost like he's got a toolbox of these gifts. It's not your toolbox. You don't get to decide. <laughs> it's his toolbox. And on the day that somebody needs prayer, he'll say, Doreen, go pray for him. Go pray for her. And that is your gift for that, for that day. You know, it's okay to have more than one gift. Jesus had them all. Except probably the gift of tongues, which he didn't need because he made up all the languages. He knew all. Paul had a lot of the gifts. And there's weaknesses with some of them. You know, you might, you might be strong in praying for somebody and intercession and weak in administration. And the Lord will use that, that gift of administration and a toolbox when you least expect it. It'll surprise you. Maybe it is for the day, maybe it's for a while, a season. Does that make sense to you today? So when he uses you, just be glad, just be grateful. Lord, that was amazing. Thank you for that. And the body of Christ is further. I love that. There are there have been times that um, 
I've done about everything in the church. I've, I've been a youth pastor, I've been a music leader, I've, I've been in a, uh, you know, I've cleaned up vomit on the floor. I mean, it's just, it's, I've done everything. I've taught children, I've worked with kids, I've played in the yard with them. You know, it's, it's just, and I don't say that to my credit. I say that because the changes, the changes is your calling is never what you do or your gift. That's not your calling. Your calling is to glorify God in whatever he wants you to do on that day. Amen. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you hold on tight, well, what's God a teacher? That's all I'm going to do in this church. <laughs> <laughs> that you're holding on too tight to a gift that's not yours. It's a gift that's the body's. And I'll throw this in, ladies. As we get older, some of our gifts need to be training others to take our place. And rejoice when somebody comes in and takes your ministry. Because that's the goal. It gives you, it frees your hands to go get another ministry, to go do something else for the body, and train somebody else to do that. Because we're not meant to be here forever. We're meant to train up, just like it says in, um, just like it says in Ephesians, to train up and to. Oh, let me read it again. It's so good. He gave the gifts in verse um, twelve to equip the saints for the work of ministry. It's not all the pastor's job. It's not all these five-fold ministry jobs, the, the apostle, the, pro, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. It's our jobs. They're training us, and we're training others. It's, it, it flows. We train the next generation. Building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to to mature manhood, or in our case, womanhood, to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. I love that. I love that. Um, I'll tell you what gift has the Lord given to the body through you. That's the question today. I want you to go home and ponder. What gift? Has the Lord given the body through you? Let's pray. Lord, we, we're honored to be used by you. you. You started this chapter by saying, make us worthy and let us walk worthy in a manner that, of, that, of which we've been called. Lord, I pray that for each of us, that as you use us, because you will. That's your desire to build up the body of Christ. As you use us, let us recognize it's all you. We love you today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Next.